the portion of the product that represents the surplus value, one-tenth of the twenty pounds, or two pounds of yarn, in the example given in section two, we call surplus produce. Just as the rate of surplus value is determined by its relation, not to the total sum of the capital, but to its variable part, in like manner, the relative quantity of surplus produce is determined by the ratio that this produce bears, not to the remaining part of the total product, but to that part of it in which is incorporated the necessary labor. Since the production of surplus value is the chief end and aim of capitalist production, it is clear that the greatness of a man's or a nation's wealth should be measured not by the absolute quantity produced, but by the relative magnitude of the surplus produce. Footnote. To an individual with a capital of twenty thousand pounds, whose profits were two thousand pounds per annum, it would be a matter quite indifferent whether his capital would employ a one hundred or one thousand men, whether the commodity produced sold for ten thousand or twenty thousand pounds, provided, in all cases, his profit were not diminished below two thousand pounds. Is not the real interest of the nation similar? Provided its net real income, its rents and profits, be the same, it is of no importance whether the nation consists of ten or of twelve millions of inhabitants. Ricardo, page 416. Long before Ricardo, Arthur Young, a fanatical upholder of surplus produce, for the rest, a rambling, uncritical writer, whose reputation is, in the inverse ratio of his merit, says, Of what use in a modern kingdom would be a whole province thus divided, in the old Roman manner, by small independent peasants, however well cultivated, except for the mere purpose of breeding men, which, taken singly, is a most useless purpose. Arthur Young, Political Arithmetic, London, 1774, page 47. End footnote. The sum of the necessary labor and the surplus labor, i.e., of the periods of time during which the workman replaces the value of his labor power, and produces the surplus value, this sum constitutes the actual time during which he works, i.e., the working day.